again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And it's raining out. It is. I'm a little drizzly. I do oh apologize. I got I did grab a raincoat and I put it on, yeah. but I don't know. I, I guess I, I got wet. without my umbrella because I was like, oh, I don't think it's gonna rain. And then halfway here, which is all of what oh, two miles, um, it started spinning and I've got this umbrella that doesn't close. <laughs> so anyway, so we're a little damp, but you know, we're here. Yeah. I'm and, glad it's raining. I mean, the yards, we do need the rain by far, like overall. I just wish it would just rain at night. Like, can you stop screwing up my afternoon plans? I don't want to be getting wet. I, yeah, I I'm, I'm enjoying wet. it. The birdies are enjoying it. My yep. plants are enjoying it. Do you it, have a lot so. more birds this year? I mean, it's hard to tell because we put out feeders yeah. for the first time. So we kind of like sit it. We have a picture window that looks yeah. out over the backyard. And um, I, I, because I didn't grow up here, I'm not that familiar yeah. with all the, the, you know, so I'm like, catbird, <laughs> cowbird, bluebird, you cardinal. Don't have, you don't have, I'm, um, I'm guessing you don't have bluebirds. You have blue jays. Blue jays, yep. yes. And then you can um, get bluebirds, but we don't have bluebirds in our picture. And, um, you know, so figuring yeah. it out, but yeah, it seems Do you like. you have a little book? So we have a book, yeah. and then we just also look I for know. the markings and then kind of yeah. Google it. Uh, we have one of those those feeders yeah. where it works on the weight. Yeah, so the squirrels supposedly. So the squirrels can't get in. Do they act Ooh, baloney. a they... very, very clever chip Chippy, because he doesn't weigh enough. <laughs> he doesn't weigh yeah, enough. Right. So he, oh my God, he's, I, I mean, I've yeah. literally watched him get fat over yeah. the past week. We've got, um. <laughs> We've never, I'm, I'm a big fan of chipmunks. I know people think they're nuisance and they're little bro. I love, well, I could watch with chipmunks. Oh, they're almost as fascinating as loons. I think it's from that, that kitty movie where with they the lived in the tree. I don't know. I just Christmas love that they're tree. little. That. It's like little kittens, you know, they just run. So um, we had a chipmunk last year and then, you know, we found him dead on the front porch because hmm. the cat, yeah. So we have this constant conversation with the cat about what he is not allowed to do when he's outdoors. Um, but I had one chipmunk. Because cats that, listen. I know. But he does seem to kind of get like, oh, she didn't like that. Because I think he's doing, you know, they do it for your uh, right. pr pr your approval. Oh. And when I'm like, really? And he's like, oh, that was a fail. Um, so now I, I had one chipmunk. And the other day I noticed there were two chipmunks. And we have a bunny or two bunnies. Although I haven't oh, seen I the see bunny in a couple yeah. weeks. Um, or not a couple weeks, a couple days. And then obviously we have a couple um, squirrels. I don't care if they eat the food. Of them. We have a I don't really big care. fat gopher right now. I saw him out there. Um, just we out. had a gopher. I saw a gopher last year at Parker Street. I haven't seen one at Varney. I mean, we've trapped at least five at that property where we, we trap them yeah. mainly and then we yeah. take them to, I'm sorry, Goffstown and where. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a magical new gopher in your garden, yeah, that's probably me. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, we leave them in a park, you know, like Speaking rural Speaking of area. outdoors <laughs> and things and nice stuff, um, have you been on the Heritage Trail up at Stark Park? Yeah. I had, Dan and I just did this on, I don't know what day it was, Saturday, Out Sunday. Out in Bedford? No, oh. up in the North End. I didn't think, I think you would have told me this. So you know where Stark Park is? Yeah. Just beyond Stark Park is the oh, entrance. Oh, I have been on that one, yeah. Since they've redone it? Oh, maybe not. Like this year? No. Okay, so they cleared... The, the group, there's an organization, part of it was from uh, Manchester Moves and the Friends of the Stark Park and all that. But on the Heritage Trail, so we walked from River Road down, I mean, it is wide, it is vehicle wide. We w got down, we were probably behind. There's like a meadow that goes yeah, down. Yeah, we were behind Sununu be Center and we decided we weren't going to get much closer to the river that Which way. Which apparently, according to Chris Sununu, like to blow is going to blow up. Um, so I guess, hmm, is that where the yeah. school's going to go? No, there ain't going to be no school. Um, no more schools! Then we came back up that path and we went to the right, which is towards Stark Park. What a gorgeous, I mean, I'm like, I'm laughing. Not funny though. We got to one part, there's a whole vegetable garden in there, mm. like this huge garden, and there's three yellow Adirondack chairs sitting there that oh, you can nice. sit. Right, but I looked at Dan, I go, well, if this was on the west side, that picnic table over there would be covered with graffiti and those chairs would be gone. <laughs> so then I said to Dan, I would oh, love I to know. see, th I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a short term project. This, we, the Friends of Stark Park have been in, uh, around forever. And on this particular day in the gazebo, they had the big band music and there were, you know, quite a few people most of them older um listening out with picnic yeah th it was just really nice thing, um yeah. but i would love to see we heart west have a bigger 
plan. Like, come up with a, a, a We're similar doing a block party. To, and, because and I was like, wait a minute, why can't we do on the west? Because the city's never going to do it for us. So why can't we do on the west side what they did up in Stark Park? You know, maybe we target. You know, I, I guess that's George Smith Fields. The fields on on one side of the Piscataquag, and then the ice arena side on the, like even the ice arena part. I mean, we're Shouldn't already that maintaining that whole area. Right. I mean, what I would like to do is to actually put out the We Heart West um, signs yes. so that people no. understand this is not being kept clean by the city. Right. It's being kept clean by well, volunteers and maybe, there, and, and there maybe and people would donate and, and there'd be out. more funds to do bigger projects if they mm -hmm. were walking and like, oh, I had no idea. So I thought it was very interesting on this Sunday's paper, front page news mm -hmm. uh, was uh, Mill City revitalization. But and South Carolina. So, so can I, uh, so, so it's Greenville, South Carolina, which is where my parents live. Yeah. And uh, whenever I go to visit, when Whenever I come back to New Hampshire and to Manchester specific, I'm like, we Why should is turn Manchester into a vibrant city like uh, yeah. Greenville, South Carolina, which is now one of the top 10 mm. places to live. And, and genuinely, it was kind of like backwards. And now it's beautiful and awesome. Yeah. What did they do? So first of all, they built a really cool pedestrian bridge. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we need. Something that's high designed. I personally think a beautiful porcupine <laughs> silhouette. Even Going if they over made the a beautiful city. archway like used to be the, br the Bridge Street Bridge. The right. Notre Dame Bridge used to be, you know, yep. an arch and it was pretty. If they did something similar, right. it would be really neat. So so a nice, and we do have a pedestrian bridge, so maybe we can just zoosh it up a little yeah. bit and make it look Or make both sides of it better. Or something, right? We know that the Elliot got a giant tax mm -hmm. break for something they never did. Yep. So I don't know. Maybe you know the, our next the, mayor the, can look at into the river's that. edge. That whole area so, was so supposed to be So we could turn space. that whole that whole sort of loop Cor yeah. that you can walk there, right? So in in uh, Greenville, they also have so a starting point is a zoo. So you kind of want an anchor yeah. point. There's a waterfall which I think we could do at Up the Emmaskeg yeah, River, yeah. right? Yeah. So that that whole area is pretty cool. And I think where Manchester just went horribly, horribly wrong is with this notion that we need one and a half to two parking spaces for in every prime, car in prime locations so, so first of all cars are going by the wayside you know we're going to move to a model where people use them in the city mm -hmm. uh like ubers lifts yeah people um, who live in know, the cities don't necessarily need, need to have cars a um so we don't need as much parking and the river is the pretty part yeah. why wouldn't we maximize that why can't we have food trucks down yep. there why can't you have a tequila truck and a margarita truck and a dog and park and, a and music and, music and, and art i don't know Nice, fun stuff. You know what the government gives us? This is what happens over time. A sign that literally says, no music, no fires, no fun after dark. Actually, no fun ever, because there's some friggin' old lady who complained once, and now we gotta do everything to make things unappealing to everyone. So can we go back to like making well, things think, awesome that we all want to So use? it's funny that you mentioned that article, because I didn't read most of it, because I know that Mancha, I know that there's the lack of a, we have a lack of a long-term plan that we actually look at. I we we spend money revising our five year plan, our ten year, all these plans. I do not think the board of mayor and aldermen ever looks at it and says, "Okay, well we did that." No, okay, next. They just they just every time just do their own thing time after time. The the funny part to me with the South Carolina correlation is okay, it is a little warmer in South Carolina, so we do have, but there's things we could do. We should have more, we could be promoting more cross-country skiing and snowshoeing paths and things like that. There's things we can promote being in a winter climate too. Right, and and also uh, I should add, it is a, a, a that whole revitalization was done with private, mm. uh, uh, it was a private-public private partnership, yeah. but predominantly private, right. right? So in the same way that we do see over the pedestrian bridge where there's like someone hunt donated yep. Yep. you'll see yep. a lot of you know the the um, oh yeah there was Delta money Dental raised for that and yeah so so the money got raised at one stage yep. as well, well so they i'd be curious well to they be like, raised well, money specifically for that bridge right 
But I mean, but why can't we rate? Okay, can, why can't we have a a long plan with a pic, pretty picture like the ones that were in the Union Leader and say, okay, so net we got the bridge. Next, we need to do this. Right. And so I in actually, order to do that, we need to raise one point five million dollars, and then we raise one point five million well, dollars and I'm do gonna, it. I'll partly tell you why because I think there's a lack of leadership in the, in right. the city. There's uh, there's a lack of clarity. No one really knows what they want to do or where they're right. going. And uh, you know, with the right kind of leadership, you know, I might say someone like uh, Victoria Sullivan, uh, who we went to yeah. her her thing yesterday. She went to sign up to run for mayor. And honestly, the part I'm most excited about with Victoria is she is uh, she's on the record. It's on her website, and I actually followed up with her as well. Is she would support the unencryption yep. of the Manchester PD's yep. scanners? Yep. So why is that important, and why am I bringing it up? Besides the <laughs> fact that I think open and transparent government helps us all do a better job, because if we know what they're doing, we can hold them accountable. And if they know we're watching, maybe they act better. I don't know. It's like a it, it's I like a I healthy don't, feedback. I don't, I, I don't buy into the negative reason. The reason they say they must encrypt. Oh, no, they, they, they just they did it because it's it's police state regime nonsense because, you know, for 100, like always in the history of policing, and then they got fancy new tools and then they were like, yeah, no, we're just going to... Uh, use these tools to protect ourselves. It hand in hand with that. So with the encryption uh, goes the body cams. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw on today's I glanced. Paper. I was. I didn't um, read the article. So so Nashua is going to be the next police force in New Hampshire that will be getting body cams. Sounds awesome. Two problems. One is they they're costing a hundred one point eight million dollars for a hundred and seventy nine staff. So that's everyone in the police yeah. department. And I was like, really? Does the secretary need one? But all right. So uh, I believe it was one point eight million for I think it was one seven nine. So the math on that is it's costing eighty. Uh, Ten thousand eight hundred. For I each think, body cam. For each body cam. Now, Seems anyone back home, maybe grab your phone and Google what does a GoPro cost that well, you can buy say, on Amazon Prime. Is but it, even if you, you know, say a, even if you say two grand, like even if you say crazy and say okay, well it's super heavy duty and it's got X, Y, and Z or whatever, and it's two grand. Where's the other eight grand? So the other thing they were saying with these cameras is they were like, well, we need these special super, 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 super expensive ones. Because um, we can't have just low quality because, visual. We have to uh, have perfect visual because we have nothing I think, right now. Because, I mean, if, if I remember correctly, it, they, they said in 2016, and it sounded like it was during the West Side lockdown, uh, also not a fan of that, <laughs> uh, when they couldn't locate one of the officers immediately. And I was like, really? So like your cops a... can't just have cell phones with GPS trackers? Like, I don't Everybody know, else? like everyone, don't parents have apps that they put on their kids? I just feel like we could probably hack this for I don't know, 80% less money. Mm. Is that too much to ask? I agree. So the other problem, so that's problem number one. Someone is making their friends rich. Problem number two, body cam footage in New Hampshire is exempt from our 91A right to know laws. That means that they are using these recordings and they are saying that no, you citizen cannot get that. Now, I've heard the argument, and I think there's some validity to it that people want uh, that their privacy that, concerns, but right? It, what if I'm the person in the video? But exactly. So I'm like, you know, actually, all right. I, I kind of right, see I that. Right. I don't want you. I don't want a video of me being shared with Joe Schmo down here so he can edit it and put it on Facebook. Right. You know, and 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 okay, fine. And honestly, that's sort of the argument they're making about the police encryptions too. But, but I'm like, mm. I, I think much like the Supreme Court of New Hampshire recently said is we have to balance these interests. And I think right now we're not balancing those interests. We're just deferring to the police state on these issues. So I think we can do better. So with the body cams, what they're actually doing, and we mentioned this on the show, right? They're actually using their body cams to do witness interviews and they're using them in the police department and then using that footage and saying, well, you can't get it because it's the exempt from right to know Right, laws. but we're going to use it against you. So, so that is just literally circumventing everything. Now, the New Hampshire Constitution very clearly says we have 
the right to know what our public officials are up to. And we have slowly, slowly, slowly carved that to where it's just nonsense and pretty much we have no access. So I I think I'm going to work, you know, I'm going to work with some yeah. legislators. It's, it's, I think it's, we've it's, got to... Um, I actually think we should eliminate the entire 91A law and just go back to what the New Hampshire Constitution says, which just basically says uh, the government's accountable to us. They're our, our agents, so they're not allowed to do anything we're not allowed to do, and that we're allowed to know anything that they're up to. And that seems like a reasonable yeah. position. Yeah, to this me. is a this is what happens quite often with legislation. The intent is good. You mu body cams sounds good. Until you start looking at it and you're like, well, wait a minute, what? Am, how is this doing me any good? Right. I mean, it well, might. Well, well, it's also, I mean, it's remarkable that these these issues, you know, when we talk about the sausage being made, right, <laughs> up at the state house, it's always in the worst areas of statism yeah. in the public schools in the police mm -hmm. in all these areas where there's this hundred percent state control of what's going on so while they're pretending they're providing you services mm -hmm. right but really they're like no we are protecting our fiefdoms against whatever you uh you know you snotty little citizens are demanding well you can't have Please. that because you peons you know um don't deserve whatever and it's in these fiefdoms and so you know i saw the democrats are unhappy about this budget they're Too unhappy bad. about uh, well, lou lou senator lou who's you know nine thousand years old now um, not that that's relevant, but I just felt the need to say it. Um, well, let's just say he's been legislating for 23 years in New Hampshire. So if you feel years. like the state has maybe moved in the wrong direction, maybe I might look at him and kind of go blame him right? for some of this crap. I know. I had a, I'm going to divert. I had a woman on Facebook arguing with me about um, the charter amendment on the schools and everything. And she's going on and on about all the terrible things that are happening in the schools and that my team, she kept saying your team. And I was like, okay, define my team. I assume she meant Republicans. Okay. I, she couldn't actually put those words together, but she kept saying your team is preventing a curriculum in the schools and your team. And I kept saying, but you know, the Republicans haven't controlled the school board in like forever. So if there's a problem, it's actually your team. Like, just like with Lou, if there's a problem, if you think state government is out of control, maybe you should look at the people who've been there for 23 years and maybe they're part of the problem. And, you know, and, and the reason I bring that up so specifically is because there was an article in today's Union Leader mm -hmm. where uh, there was an op-ed by Lou, Lou. D'Alessandro, so set, sitting senator in District 20, the, the gentleman I will be running against again, yeah. I guess. Um, and... He, the headline was uh, t t lower. Rooms, lower rooms and boards taxes are bad for New Hampshire. Literally, like, so I was like, what? So lower taxes are bad for all of us who all, everyone pays room and board taxes because if you've ever gotten takeout at a yep. restaurant, coffee at, at a restaurant, donuts, ice cream with your kids, um, uh, uh, the rotisserie chickens yep. at the, the grocery, the grocery any store. Any prepared foods from the, you go and buy one orange, I think you, they charge a tax. You know, you're paying like 9% tax. Yep. And of course that number is also quite high it's, compared yeah, to other yes. states. Very and high. I've always been curious about that. And then I was like, oh, I bet you it's because we're such a low tax state mm -hmm. and because it's it's such a, I mean, it is a usage tax. Mm -hmm. So as taxes go. You can't go, avoid it to a degree. I, I'm like, okay, look, out of all, you know, a, right. a, I think taxation is theft. And I yes, think, you know, we can do better. I think the free market can supply anything that is mandated in this way at a lower, better price in a more efficient and you know, awesome way. So, um, so I think it's because over the years they've just kind of been putting up that tax because there weren't, there's no real special interest protecting the lowness on that. But for the first time in a long time, we cut those taxes. Yep, we went from a what? I mean, you would think they, the way they're carrying on, like it's we've like, done. Oh. So we went from nine percent, which is a lot, nine cents on every dollar that you spend in a restaurant or getting ice cream or staying in a hotel or an Airbnb, um, dropped all the way down to eight and a half percent. Whoa! Ooh, right? But Lou literally says, "So the world's gonna end." Well, he's like. <laughs> The budget, the Republican budget is awful for people and I, and it's only 10 cents on a $10 BLT. And I thought, okay, you're right. It is 
only 10 cents because apparently stealing your money in small increments is perfectly acceptable as long as it's in small increments. So it's if it's how only, they get away right, with if it, it's right? only 10 cents, we can steal that money. Um, it was just a tax on a T, you know? Just a little tax. Well, and interesting in this article, um, I'm having a hard time reading the way it is. Um, I believe it was Democrat Senator Cindy Rosenwald that I mean, it was a, he, they, he, he, he just goes on of, like he like you people are worried about things. There's bigger problems. Yet this is the same party. The Biden administration just weeks ago for when we were all celebrating Independence Day, uh, you know, they tweeted out Americans, the, the relief efforts of the Biden administration's working because you saved 16 cents on your Independence Day barbecue, 16 cents for a whole barbecue at the same time that gas prices literally are a dollar a gallon more. I paid over $50 to fill my tank the other day, which I have never done. My car is 13 years old. Uh, I, you know, I've been, I, and I, I actually just... looked up, because sometimes I do feel like I get caught up in rhetoric and I don't want to keep, re I don't want to repeat things that aren't true. Uh, 2021, June's gas prices were three, on average, this is all, you know, summarized grades and whatever. $3.50, almost 316 a gallon it's june of last year two dollars and 17 cents so a, a full wow. dollar since you since we did away with the mean tweets we did yeah. we traded mean tweets you for know, a dollar a gallon in gas prices i was really mad in the shower this morning i almost sent this tweet out maybe i'll do it when i'm off the show and i was just like you know because I have a lot of my lefty friends spend mm -hmm. the entire time with the orange man sending mean tweets, <laughs> talking about kids in cages, which I'm down with talking about. It's yeah. awful. It should not be happening. So, you know, we're on the same page. I'm constantly yeah. looking for where are the things where we actually yeah. agree so that we can fix things instead of this, you know, notion where everyone digs in their heels because it's our team or their team, yeah. right? So kids in cages. Bad thing, bad mm -hmm. under Trump. It was bad under Obama. It also existed under Obama, and it's equally bad under Biden. Right. But if you once, once posted on social oh, media in the past four years about kids in cages, and you are not also doing it right now, you are, as they call it in a regime, the useful idiots that they need in order for their regime to exist. Yep. Yep. And I implore you, if that was an issue you were upset about, last year and the three years prior to that, then please continue to be upset about it and let's see if we can actually make a change with that. Did you happen to see on Facebook today um, the picture of the Democrats in the airplane? No. So I was just like, <laughs> I, there's a recent Twitter feed from last week, Dan always says the guy who won the internet that week, um, <laughs> about, from a guy who's on the left trying to explain the Trump phenomena and why people are just so outraged. And it really comes down to um, people used to believe that their government was there for them and they're <laughs> slowly realizing that their government is there for someone, it's just not them. And that the mass media, the media and the social media and all them are working against them. And people are just starting to realize because it's becoming so blatantly obvious that like, wait, you're using me and you're manipulating me. So there's a picture on Facebook this morning and I was like, what is that? And it's in a plane and there's, you know, 20 or 30, I think they were all women, um, you know, smiling and waving. And I'm thinking, oh, what's that? Well, then I read the caption and then I, of course, go and Google. Apparently in Texas, there's a vote coming. There was a vote that was gonna happen. So in order to avoid being compelled to come and vote, much like what they did in Wisconsin when they were voting on right to work. Remember all the Democrats fled to other states and we had to send like, that Wisconsin had to send police over the border to physically bring them back. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, that. they did. And then now in Texas, the Democrats are doing the same thing. So instead of actually legislating and representing the people that have put them there, they got on a plane and left to other places so that they wouldn't have to vote on legislation that they knew was gonna pass. Oh, wow. So that's bad enough that okay. this is what this is a tactic. But then they were all on the plane, which is fine. Not a single one of them had a mask on, which is fine, except the federal government is going to mandate that you and I, if we get on a plane, oh, sure. must wear a mask all the time. Oh, but, and but I'm, Tammy, and, and, I mean, the rules don't so apply to the elite. It's just so insane. You know? And all I kept thinking was, one. Let how, them get vaccinated. How insane that they were fleeing. Two, someone thought they should take a picture. And then someone, nobody thought, well, this isn't gonna look good. 
This is hypocritical because they don't think things apply to them. This is the problem with so many people in government. They write rules and laws and then they don't abide. We saw it. Remember how, like, literally Medicare and and oh, it all the it all doesn't the restrictions. apply. No. Like none none of the things that make things worse apply to anyone in Congress. They no. exempt themselves no. from everything. It's yeah. it's no. it's it's jaw dropping. You know, like the more research you do, well, you don't even have to dig deep anymore. That's the thing. It's just like flies well, you in see, front of you. But this is, I think, this is part of that tension that we've talked about in the past, right? So technology is both about to enslave us, mm -hmm. and <laughs> but really it is also a tool that is allowing us to be free, right? Because it's very hard for them. I mean, we're seeing this with this uh, censorship and indoctrination yeah. that's happening with the the vaccinations and the fact uh -huh. that you're not allowed to talk about any kind of counter narrative to the official. I mean, I think of Pravda. Right, and, I'm like, you can't and make this the up. the Stasi and the Nazis and every authoritarian regime that has come before. You know, we see the uprising in Cuba right now. I was right gonna now. say, Cuba, <laughs> the only reason we're seeing that is because it's on social media. Yep. We wouldn't even know that the people in Cuba are once again very frustrated with communism and would like it to end. end. Because you and, know what? Wait, wait, socialism did you hear, doesn't Did you hear work. AO, what AOC had to say? No, mm -mm. oh, that's because she didn't have anything to say. Oh, I bet. So she's know? all about freeing the people, except mm. for those ones in Cuba that are living under a uh, dictatorship. And 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 an actual right regime. there next to our country. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hypocrite. So 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 the point is, it is this battle, right? And as long as we can keep some access to open channels, I think ideas will win. Really, what technology creates for us is is a marketplace for ideas to compete. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they are suppressing certain ideas is because they can't actually win the argument. They can call you names, yep. I mean, the, and they, they will, and they do, uh, but they can't actually counter the argument. And that is our strength, and that's what we have to lean into, and that's why we just keep having to repeat, you know, the right things and help more people open up their eyes. I agree. You can learn by <laughs> reading my book. Check it out, The Ecstatic Pessimist, Stories of Hope, mostly on my website and on Amazon. If you're living in Manchester, and especially if you're someone who's watching us and saying, hey, I like what those people have to say, um, there are still slots open for municipal elections, whether it be people working at the polls, because it's important that we have um, conservative, more liberty-minded people working at the polls to make sure that shenanigans don't happen, because shenanigans do happen um but there's also slots open for school board and alderman in a couple different wards so um if you need information on that um or have an idea for a show or a guest or anything questions about anything want to yell at us whatever oh um, yell at us match talk <laughs> at gmail.com that's match talk at gmail.com um we have a facebook page this uh, carla does a great job uploading this to youtube and odyssey and yay for jeremy coffin for more and more people using odyssey these days right and and just creating those alternatives to keep the truth out that's there right. that's all we got we'll see you next week stay dry thanks guys bye